The first story we have here from TimCast.com. Twitter board utilizes poison pill to stop Elon Musk from buying the company. The plan intends to reduce the likelihood that any entity, person, or group gains control of Twitter. Check this out. Do you guys know how this works? Mm, Kind of. So this is, if Elon Musk tries to buy up more than 15% of the company, they're going to offer special stock to the other investors at a discount rate so they can dilute the equity power that Elon would have, meaning... No matter how much he buys, the other investors can buy up and take away the power he's buying. They're they're effectively destroying their own company to stop Elon Musk from ending their censorship. Wow. Yeah, uh, that's, that's probably crazy. because the uh, the Saudi Arabian king is involved with Prince, uh, yes. the prince as I well, mean, the, the Saudi Arabian state as well. So I imagine it's all going well, through so, the king. Well, elaborate. I, I know there's a prince who, who who invested. The prince tweeted out, and it also said that the state itself. He said, "Kingdom, myself, H. yeah, the kingdom." And but is, and is that just myself. his company? Or well, is... to be honest, to be fair, I don't know. I assume that that was the kingdom itself. Yeah, I saw uh, Zero Hedge tweeted that he actually sold his shares. I don't know if that's true. The really? prince, the prince sold his shares. I don't know if that's mm-hmm. true. It's hard to know, but I think the uh, the big play here is that the people who own Twitter, as we mentioned the other day, and 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 what we can get into now. They want the power, the yeah. political power of Twitter to control the conversation. Saudis aside, I think it's Vanguard. Vanguard up their stake to, to say now we own more than Elon. So there's some very nefarious corporate interests that want control of this mouthpiece that mm. is Twitter. What do you guys think? Vanguard and uh, BlackRock have a pretty substantial Disney stake as well. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. They also and own each other, which is, which is weird. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like they own 2% of the other and it's, stuff like it's that. It's inbred, it's all interconnected. if you will. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> Sorry, I had to go there. It's, it's, <laughs> it's true. It's a little inbred <laughs> yeah. when it comes to the money. So. Here's, here, here's the crazy thing, right? Let me ask you this question, Brett. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you use Twitter a lot? Yeah. Have you always used Twitter a lot? No, only this year. See, because only this year, so only for a few months. Or no, uh, as of last, so in the last year. It was like mm-hmm. early 2021. And you are 20 years old, mm-hmm. Gen Z, mm-hmm. and you're only recently getting involved in Twitter. Yep. Twitter is, it's like the political space, right? Mm-hmm. Like, how do your friends feel about it, younger people? Honestly, it is not the most used. I think Instagram and TikTok are mm-hmm. just what is most heavily dominated. In politics, everybody is on Twitter. So my friends that are in the political sphere, they are very active. But outside of that... People will have like a burner account, basically, where they go to just look at memes, but they don't tweet <laughs> anything. Yeah. They're not involved. It's kind of like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll check Twitter. But it's a very I think in normal circles. It's kind of outdated. Like, oh, yep. that's just whatever. And I never really had a, a reason or an interest in being on it until I started. I was writing for Fee and they were like, you need to be on there to, you know, promote your articles and that kind of stuff. Um, but that's a, that's not even true. Yeah. So when I worked at Fusion, they were they didn't have Twitter uh, I think uh, it's been a while, but we had a conversation about how, you know, websites like to put the social media link so you can tweet out the story, mm-hmm. post post the stories, and they didn't care about Twitter and asked them why, and they said Twitter doesn't drive traffic. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, okay. For me, I was like, Twitter's really important. Mm-hmm. But back in the day, when it was the free speech wing of the free speech party, it mm-hmm. was really important. Now, you know, like I mentioned, I'll post like a picture of a hairless rabbit for <laughs> no reason and just... Just post nonsense because yeah. the platform is garbage. Uh, Twitter's kind of like the repository social media network. I, I signed up in 08, didn't use it till ni- 2019 because I thought it was crap. But it's YouTube is where it's at. The video makes you famous, and then they come and follow you on Twitter when they yes. find out you have a Twitter account. Yeah. No one finds you on Twitter. That's not how it works. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe not no one, but it's not. Well, people found me on Twitter when they realized that I looked like Ben Shapiro. That's oh, yeah. where I got the oh. bulk of mine. <laughs> I had like 400 <laughs> followers, and then Jeremy retweeted the side by side of me and Ben, and it was like, oh, okay, no. now you have 20,000. And I was wow. like, okay. Pin tweet on your account right now. It'll, yeah, you can go yeah. check it out. I'm Brett yeah, Cooper. Yeah, people, <laughs> people were chatting female Ben Shapiro. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, you're taller. I am. Yeah. Yeah. Ben's actually not that short. That's no, the funny no. thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we, we just hung out with him the other day, and I, I'm, I'm like, everybody says he's short, and then he walks up to me. I'm like, oh, he's actually a fairly average, yeah. Height, yeah. like totally normal guy. That's they just they just like lying and making things up because they want to hate on people. Exactly. But any, anyway, back to the reason I was yeah. asking you these questions. Twitter's a failing company. Mm-hmm. Like, yo, we're I'm 36, Ian 75. Yeah. You, know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you look good. Though. Thanks, you man. look good. Yeah. <laughs> no, but like in all seriousness, we, we're we're an older demographic, and you have to get young people involved in 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 your culture if you want that culture to persist Mm. twitter seems to be on a train track that leads just flying off a cliff Mm. they're not they're not convincing young people to be involved in Mm -hmm. what twitter is they have turned twitter into an activist blog yo i called this i said several years ago and they were banning all the fun people the trolls and the silliness and the memes i was like dude it's going to turn into a left-wing activist blog and it's going to have 10 people and eventually it's going to be one guy and some people might visit it 
Hmm. But so why would a young person want to go on a platform to be lectured by old fogies complaining about policy? Yeah. Yeah. Instagram and I think Instagram and TikTok you mm -hmm. mentioned is it's pictures and video. I yeah. mean, it's video for the most part. Yeah. Twitter's text. It's a lot of text. You know, you go there to read and research essentially, but mm -hmm. not to have fun. I don't know. Is yeah. it fun for you? I mean, I enjoy it because for my show, which is technically me diving into comment sections and that kind of thing, I Oof. it's my... I, I know. Uh, it, it, it's the uh, <laughs> I go into the trenches, my friends. Um, it is it's the hub of my research, basically. So I enjoy it because but most of the stuff that I'm looking at is like, you know, batshit crazy things. And so I personally enjoy it. But I wouldn't go on there if this wasn't like my work. I would right. probably choose TikTok. I would choose Instagram, YouTube. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would. But it used to be fun. People yep. would go on and they'd post memes. Mm -hmm. They'd share memes like crazy. Mm -hmm. And they would uh, uh, troll. Yep. Trolling was fun. And then we get this, this like the CEO now, uh, Parag Agrawal, he's like, you know, it's not about free speech. It's about this, the current state of things and having a healthy conversation. And it's like, dude, if I wanted to go to like a youth seminar where they explained to me, you know, morals or something, sure, I'd, I'd book it. If I want to go and just tw post my thoughts and tell people, like, here's a funny joke. You can't do that on Twitter anymore, mm -hmm. so what do you do? You got to go somewhere else. What about Reddit? Is Reddit still? I use Reddit sometimes, but how are no. they with censorship? Like, Oh, it's, it's the worst. I was going to say, that's what I've yeah. heard. I know that, yeah. Dude. Because that used it's, to be. You know what it is? It's like, it's like it feels like, it, it, like the school principal has taken over the social media platforms. <laughs> yeah. And it's like we used to, you know, throw bouncing balls down the hall and then run after it. Now the principal's in the hallway all day going like, hey, you don't do that. And we're like, mm. this is so lame. Let's go somewhere I think else. Lauren Southern tweeted out that it was like only five years ago that if someone got banned off of YouTube or Twitter, it was like global news. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now, geez, you blink and then like a bunch of accounts are gone. I don't know who's the most recent ban. Does it even matter? But it's just, it's yeah. disturbing how slippery the slope can be. Remember, remember how fun Alex Jones was? Yeah. Yes. Ugh. And yes. Did, 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 yeah. So, yeah. Was there a point where you ever used Twitter in any, uh, even a little bit before? Never. Probably. And, and that's, that, that's the thing I think where, you know, I look at the Elon Musk stuff and I'm just like, dude, Twitter is blowing itself up on purpose. Yeah. It has to be. Because and that was another thing that I felt with Elon that it's like, I love what he's doing, the statement that he's making, but I also kind of had the opinion, like, it already is, like you're saying, a sinking ship. There's so much other crap that's going on in the world. There's so many communities that need us that, I mean, you know, everything else. And it's like, this is great, but also... No, he's right. Elon Musk is right. Yeah. He, he, he posted the top 10 Twitter accounts and said some of them haven't even posted this yet. Yep. Like Justin Bieber or whatever. Yeah. Because the platform is dead. Yeah. Mm. There's mm. users on it. They gain a little bit of users. Dude... You know, we, we were talking to Jeremy about this and he's like, hey, I, I said, I don't even take it seriously anymore. I used to post news stories. Now it's like I just bra I, I post like Chicken City is some great accomplishment because I'm just I'm like, it's a it's a it's a garbage platform filled with garbage people mm -hmm. who just want to just they rag on you. They lie about you. They smear you. There's no good conversations. There's no fun. There's no jokes. You'll get banned for saying learn to code. I don't take it seriously. And then, you know, he's like, you have a million followers, though. And I'm like, I don't I don't know why. But I actually do know why. It's what you said. YouTube fame. Well, people will watch these shows and then they'll follow on Twitter mm -hmm. because they want to just you know, like see their news feed and see information. But I, I can't take a platform seriously if it's dying. And it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can gain followers. I'll put it this way. Let's say there's 100 million people that are using the site at any moment. Sure. I have a million followers. So I can lose a bunch and gain a bunch within that sphere. But it feels like the sphere of actual functioning valuable users is just going down. Yeah, Elon said it was yeah. like the town square and that's why he wants to buy it to free it. I don't know if he's right about that. It doesn't, I'm on it a little bit, but it's such a small it's thing. It's kind of like the bathroom stall wall. Mm. It feels like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And more I, than the town square. I wonder if him just saying, okay, forget it. I'm not buying it. Let it fail. Might be the right move. Then try and waste energy and time pouring all this money into some you know, relatively dying platform. It's, it'd be cool if he could free the software code, but we mm. really don't need it. Hmm. What would be the town square, though, if YouTube? it was not? Yeah, I guess. I think no, so. What do you no. think? It's not centralized. Mm. There's there's disparate communities. The thing about Twitter is it's really easy to overlap with different yeah. groups. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, Ben was mentioning that he trends once every three weeks. And it's because one of his tweets will merge into another community, which will then go nuts about it. Mm -hmm. YouTube doesn't do that. YouTube is much more uh, rigid. You know, like if you, you don't get you don't get shown like stuff that you can't is, is outside of your, you can't retube. True. A video. Yeah. Yeah. True. True. You know? that. 
And so they used to have that your channel page. You could post stuff on yeah. your channel page, and all your followers would see your channel posts. That was like you, in two thousand seven. You, you, I think you can still do that if yeah, you like community. Yeah, yeah, you like stuff, and, and and but YouTube can't capture that. So Twitter became this rapid. It it, be, it became political because it's what are you posting? You're posting ideas. Mm-hmm. YouTube, you're posting videos. Instagram, you're posting photos. So it makes sense that the the platform that typically is about text, idea, concepts, information would become political news some of the highest level stuff. The problem is Twitter sought to light itself on fire, burn itself to the ground and make it a trash platform that nobody wants to use. Yep. I thought it was a doomed from the beginning. I, I 2008, there's videos of me in 2008 when all the people were like, hey, this new thing, it's Twitter. I'm like, oh great, another one. We just did Facebook. We already have YouTube. What are you guys doing? We just have, we have our, our and they're like, oh, we're gonna tweet our, our, our message, our, our six word messages to each other. I'm like, dude, text is gonna warp our minds. Don't fall into it. I, I, I agree and disagree, especially with the text warping your mind, but I disagree on the prospects of Twitter. When, it for, when I started using it, I think I signed up in 2009, I was like, what's the big deal with this? Mm-hmm. And then within a little while, I was like, whoa, now cool. I get it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The rapid virality, like you, you tweet something and if it's good information, if it's a funny joke, it ripples out way, yeah. outward in a massive wave that gets bigger. That little pebble you drop can become a tsunami. Remember that woman? Who was on a plane and she made that joke about AIDS. Oh my gosh. And then yeah. like her phone was off and then when she Jeez, landed, Andy. they destroyed her life. Jeez. She had like two hundred followers. Do you ever hear this story? Mm-mm. This lady had like two hundred followers. And then she made a joke about how white people tend not to get AIDS in Africa. Oh but it was actually a social justice joke. The point she was making was that the people who are who are mostly victimized by this tend to be black. Mm. And she said it in a tongue in cheek way. This was like one of the first major cancellations, I think. Mm -hmm. The tweet went viral and she was just some like random woman and she lands and she like had a panic attack. Everyone was, she was, there were news, news stories written about her. They were going nuts. Wow. You know what ends up happening is people like, there's this viral thread going around explaining how Elon Musk will not be able to save the platform because he doesn't understand that web, web 1.0 is over. The era of the wild west internet is gone. And this guy explains that in the beginning of the internet, it was it was the frontier. It was barren wastelands. Yeah, you can go out into the middle of a barren wasteland and scream whatever stupid, ridiculous nonsense you want because ain't nobody going to hear it. Eventually, some people show up, and then those who don't like hearing the crazy guy in the desert screaming leave, and those who think it's funny stick around and watch. But where we're at now with the internet, the foundations have been built. It's not just the frontier anymore. It's, it's, it's totally urbanized. Mm-hmm. The internet now is the world. You can't just go into the middle of the city and start screaming insane things. The cops will come and tell you to keep mm-hmm. it down. They'll say you have your free speech, you can't scream. People will come and scream back at you. A fight might break out. And so what this guy is saying is because of that, censorship emerges. And he's like, the only thing the big tech platforms want is for you to calm the F down, be civil. And I'm reading this and I'm like, dudes, right about the frontier thing, mm-hmm. wrong about the censorship and what mm-hmm. they want. Yeah. They, the, the, the people at, at, at Twitter are all biased. Not, not every single person. I mean, like the higher ups, they mm-hmm. are. They think they're not. They are. It's baked into their rules. They will ban you for calling someone dude, like when they suspended Zuby. And this makes it not fun. Mm-hmm. And if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. I don't want, I, here, I'll put it this way. How many of you on your day off would decide to go somewhere so that someone can scream in your face about how ugly you are? <laughs> You'd be, you'd be like, ah, no, I'll just go to the movies instead, right? <laughs> That's what Twitter has become by eliminating the fun mm-hmm. and by uh, th- th- their outright bias. Thanks for checking out this segment from the TimCast IRL podcast. If you want to watch live, you can check out this channel Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to this channel. And if you want more unfiltered and uncensored content with all of these guests, Go to TimCast.com and become a member. All of these guests you know and love in exclusive segments on our website where we are unrestricted in what we talk about, so you'll definitely not want to miss it. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you all next time.